Sodium is one of those things that everyone knows is unhealthy if we eat too much of it. At least, that's what we've been told by major health organizations and government guidelines. But perhaps we should take those recommendations with a pinch of salt. Okay, now I've got that terrible pun out of the way, let's quickly clarify some facts that everyone agrees upon. Sodium is a crucial electrolyte in the body. Now many foods contain small amounts naturally, but most of the sodium in the diet comes from salt. Okay, so salt is made up of 40% sodium and 60% chloride by weight. So essentially, when we're talking about sodium, it also refers to salt. Sodium in the bloodstream does raise blood pressure slightly. High blood pressure, or hypertension, is a major risk factor for heart disease, stroke, and other serious conditions. In fact, correcting high blood pressure is the single most important thing you can do to improve your cardiovascular health and lifespan. Okay, so we've established that the sodium we eat largely comes from salt, and that too much sodium or salt can increase blood pressure, which is really bad. So then should we all just try to eat as little sodium as possible? Well, no, not exactly. Uh, a recent cross-sectional French study using data from 8,670 volunteers concluded that overall that salt intake was not associated with blood pressure in either male or females. In fact, high weight was the biggest contributing factor. And in a massive Cochrane review of 34 previous studies, salt restriction was shown to reduce blood pressure by only one to two points in healthy people, which is really unremarkable if your blood pressure is not high. In saying that, restriction was found to reduce blood pressure by about three to five points in those with existing high blood pressure or hypertension, which theoretically will be beneficial for cardiovascular health. I say theoretically because another Cochrane review of seven randomized controlled trials which is the gold standard of research, found no effect of salt restriction on actually preventing cardiovascular disease or death, which is of course the actual outcomes we're trying to minimize. When we want to minimize uh, high blood pressure or lower blood pressure, the reason is because we want to prevent cardiovascular disease or death. Now I note that only two of the seven studies in this particular review were in people with high blood pressure though. Basically it appears that for otherwise healthy people, uh, your sodium intake doesn't raise blood pressure. And if it does, uh, it's very modest. But for those with existing high blood pressure, it's probably beneficial to reduce your sodium intake. Now that, that change won't be huge necessarily, but it is enough to warrant some dietary changes. So how much sodium is optimal each day? A lot less than what we currently eat actually. The average American eats 5,000 milligrams of sodium per day, or about two teaspoons per day. and this is just unnaturally high. General public health recommendations are for the average adult to limit sodium intake to less than 2,300 milligrams or about one teaspoon of salt per day. Now, this is not based on any good evidence regarding blood pressure though, as I've discussed, but a really high intake is associated with other health issues and overeating calories in general. If you have high blood pressure, chronic kidney disease, or diabetes, you're advised to limit intake even further down to 1,500 milligrams a day or less, equal to less than three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Um, this is a good idea just to be safe. All those numbers make it sound really complicated, but it doesn't have to be, because 75% of all the sodium that we eat comes from processed packaged foods and junk foods rather than salt that we add ourselves at the table. So simply cutting down or better yet eliminating processed foods from your regular diet will get you within those guidelines. In other words, and you've probably heard this before, but just eat real whole foods and add a touch of salt if it needs it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the Authority Nutrition YouTube channel, be sure to click that big red button below the video so you can get notified when all our new videos are published.